my name is Hunter, uh, per usual. I'm one of the community managers over here at uh, Optian Labs building Arbitrum. Uh, and today we're joined by none other than uh, Jones Dow, uh, more specifically uh, by Ice, the, uh, the founder, uh, Nock, who's a, a project manager, as well as uh, Shreddy, who is a head of marketing, and he's also on the uh, Jones Dow account. Uh, how's it going, guys? Yeah, pretty good, man. Pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, when we started this, we had really humble beginnings and never thought we'd be here up, you know, Twitter space with the off-chain labs team. So yeah, my pleasure. Yes, doing well. Thank you. It's freezing over here. It's like 60. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's, it's frozen. Wow. Florida man. Yeah, it's, it's, freezing. It's, freezing. it's freezing cold. I mean, you... <laughs> This is unreasonable. I feel like uh, they should declare a state of emergency. This is ridiculous. I didn't come here for this. It's, going yeah, it's like 30 over here. Like, okay, we're talking Fahrenheit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not, not 60. <laughs> if it was 60 Celsius, I think we'd have other problems. Um, you know, we certainly wouldn't be talking about Jones at that point. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know, I mean, you know... Um, yeah, I, I really, really want to thank you guys for coming up here because just truly, I, I mean, obviously, yeah, you guys say you come from quote unquote humble beginnings, but truly it's it's uh, it's always a pleasure to be speaking with uh, an Arbitrum Native ecosystem project. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm sure it's as much of a, of a uh, you know, <clears throat> as a blessing for you guys as it is for me, uh, myself. So I'm uh, really excited to, to dive into, uh, into, into your protocol today. Um, I, I think just for starters, um, for people who may not know, can you guys maybe give a, a brief overview of maybe how Jones Dow uh, came to be and I guess what it is, frankly? Yeah, for sure. Um, so first, what we are is that, you know, we as a team set off to build basically a suite of automated and decentralized tools currently in the form of vaults to really simplify a lot of the, you know, complexity of DeFi. So, you know, the way that started out was that we were all, you know, hardcore Dopex maxis. And we we started off building this project on top of Dopex um, and offering option vaults um, that, you know, deploy various strategies in order to generate yield on assets ranging from RDPX, DPX, ETH to, you know, even Geome. And today where we find ourselves is that we, we're really at the forefront of simplifying the complexity in DeFi with a lot of, different strategies, um, creating products that are not only producing high yield, but also, you know, safe for users. We, we have a pretty big focus on auditing and risk management and really just making sure everything we put out there, we take our time and are very professional with and, and follow a very standard process. And yeah, I mean, the reason we really built on Arbitrum is because I, I think that when you have protocols like GMX and Dopex and all our ecosystem partners, by their own right, they're building very complex products, right? There's a perpetual DEX. There's a, you know, DEX for trading options and straddles and all this stuff. And if you want to make strategies that simplify that, you know, transfer and hedge risk in various ways to make these things simple for end users, you're going to have to do some stuff that, that's pretty complex behind the scenes um, from, you know, I'm talking about from a like developer point of view uh, talking from a just, you know, even like transaction and gas optimization point of view, because the stuff we're doing would be prohibitively expensive on mainnet and, you know, being on Arbitrum with the security of the inheriting the security of the main chain while also being able to do all this complex stuff um, in terms of architecture and, how, the way our technology works, you know, it can really be only done on Arbitrum, which is why it's such a pleasure to be here. Oh no, yeah, a hundred percent there, and and I think um, I think that's the cool part about kind of, at least at least for myself, kind of uh, you know, community managing, uh, you could say um, in, in this ecosystem, it's because it's like I've been here since before Arbitrum one launched. Uh, so it's like to see like uh, and it, it, it pretty much in, in innovative projects like Dopex come around and then have Jones um, and I guess thereafter Plutus just kind of building on top of that. I guess you could say like ecosystem within an ecosystem is just insane to me. Um, it's 
yeah, I don't know. It's uh, like I, I truly am impressed by uh, what you guys are doing, and uh, really looking forward to diving a little bit deeper. Um, I, I'm interested too, like you know, based off of what you guys just said, like what role did you guys hope, you know, when you were building Jones Dow, uh, to play within uh, the Arbitrum ecosystem? I mean, at the time, we, we were really focused on Dopex. I mean, we set out to solve capital inefficiency in DeFi options. Because, as you know, you know, most DeFi options are European options. And that means that when you are writing options, you lock up capital for a specified period of time. Now, you know, in the real world, that can be pretty inconvenient, right? A lot of us have TradFi backgrounds. So we actually, you know, have experience dealing with the stuff. Um, on a day-to-day basis. But what DeFi lets you do is that you can you can have vaults that automatically um, write options across, you know, a variety of strikes and strategies. And then those positions, you know, for Dopex, they're European, so they're locked until the end of the epoch. You can tokenize them as ERC-20 tokens, and then you can make them freely liquid, which is what we set out to do with our J assets. Since then, you know, it's almost been a year. We're coming up on Jones's birthday, uh, you know, in January. So pretty excited for that. But since then, we've evolved into a, you know, into building tools and decentralized and automated products to generate yield in a safe way, um, you know, across all of DeFi. So we have products coming out, um, you, you know, that are delta neutral, uh, delta and gamma neutral with JUSDC. We have leveraged GLP products coming out, which will be JGLP, which is, you know, leveraged GLP, which is automatically and uh, algorithmically managed. We have stuff coming out with um, Aura Finance and Balancer, um, J Aura. So, you know, I'm really pleased to say that we've expanded our initial scope a lot, and I'm really excited for where we're going. I think to add on to that too, just. You know, a lot of people think about Yearn and they have a pretty, pretty basic feeling about what Yearn does. And, you know, Yearn's kind of had a, a pretty solid business model for a while and you know, they're pretty, they're pretty big. I think though that the, the moat there is uh, not really that, that uh, deep. I think that what we offer folks is maybe a, something a little bit more complex. So as we'll get into when we're talking about our products, um, Everything we do and everything that we build, uh, unless we have a moat, we're, we don't touch it. Um, everything that we try and ideate, uh, we think is complex enough that competitors would have a very difficult time trying to replicate it. And even if they could get close to it, um, you know, we, we believe first mover advantage is a big deal. Um, I think what, what we'll be able to show a lot of folks out there just in general is that they may have some preconceived notions about what our protocol was when it launched, uh, but we've spent a considerable amount of time bringing together a group of people that are very talented, um, very smart, and we think that this combination of, of, of brain share uh, is really going to be a huge differentiator for us. I mean, if we're doing... If we're doing our 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 jobs properly, you know, uh, uh, we should we should be able to be, uh, you know, seen in, in the same manner, but maybe a little bit differently as like a yearn. Uh, except that I think the difference is that we we really do focus a lot on automation, back testing, uh, and decentralization as best as we can and we can talk about that obviously with some of our upcoming product suite so go from there yes yeah, so we're going to talk a bunch about the uh uh some of the upcoming stuff that you guys had and some of the stuff that you mentioned um but actually real quick kind of off of what you were saying there knock um i'd love to hear a little bit about actually y'all's thought process behind balancing that idea of making sure that whatever you're putting out is um, like innovative um, and, and complex in nature, but also uh, something that's understandable by the average user, mm-hmm. um, assuming that's the goal. Because uh, obviously you can get very, very complex with DeFi, but I think the challenge is maybe 
making it so that the average user can also access it. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the problem is that, you know, t take a look at, just take a look at overall options liquidity in the space. Um, you know, options liquidity in general, doesn't matter what chain you're on, is, has, has gone down significantly, as has the total TVL in all of the uh, products across crypto, right? Total, which is uh, basically the market cap of all things crypto, you have total one, two, three, there's all kinds of different things you could throw in trading view. But they've all gone down significantly. So obviously, as people have walked away um, and assets have come down and interest has gone away uh, to an extent, you know, the question is, all right, well, what are some of the reasons why people walked away? Right? Um, I think part of the problem is that people don't understand Greeks, so they don't understand options well enough. But options are only part of the picture when you're thinking about how you should be putting together a product if you want to even include options. I think that the way that you design products, the way that you think about attack vectors, your overall knowledge of previous hacks, attacks, you know, we've seen some horrible things happen to some other protocols in the past. And frankly, you know, we're in a position where we feel strong enough about the math and what we're doing that, you know, we've literally proactively gone out and talked to people about their products that have, you know, we have nothing to gain from this. Okay. Um, we just think that it's it's really very very important and very crucial that um, when people are anon as they are in this space right so obviously everybody here uh, is anon I'm not saying that people necessarily you know would fake their credentials as the default right but what I am saying though is that you really don't know who you're kind of doing business with and you kind of have to see it right so I think proof of knowledge and not thinking about that in the way like ZK, you know, and, and these proofs would be saying, but I think just proof of maybe, maybe even calling it just proof of, 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 uh, understanding is something that we need to see more of in our space. And so as we've kind of put this really complex product out there and started talking to people about these concepts and we started talking about gamma almost a little bit as a meme, because, you know, the, the, the fact that everybody is trying to build, it seems like the same product, the, you know, and, and there's very little differentiation between them. Uh, you know, to us, that's a little concerning um, because maybe they didn't see the same things we saw. Um, and so taking the other side of that, which is, you know, if I'm talking specifically about, let's say, GLP, uh, why is it that I would want to put something like GLP in a straitjacket? when it's already 50% stables and it's got some of the best yields on one of the best platforms in DeFi period. So if I feel good about all those things, why not have a product that serves one master and then a separate product, JUSDC, that serves another master? We've, we've tried to think these things through in game theory. Um, I think it's a culmination of taking all that together and saying, look, let's distill it down to what matters for people. Who is the target audience? And the answer should be, if you want a risk on product, we have different products that are possible for you, but we would never tell you, uh, and I, and we do it, we do a call. If you, if you're not familiar with it, it's called hats off. It's all just shameless self promotion, but, uh, it's on Spotify if you haven't heard it, but we, we talk about markets and then we do a little bit about our products, but we mostly talk about markets, market conditions. We constantly want to talk about simplifying and boiling down all of these events and things that are happening in the world into actionable scenarios for folks. And we think that one of the problems with DeFi is just that it's a little bit, I think, disconnected from the end user, right? Um, okay, you have these great products, but like, should I use them? Should I not use them? Do they make sense for me? So, you know, with, for us with GLP, it's, it's a really simple proposition for our upcoming product do you want to hold something that feels like you're holding the beta of native ETH or BTC roughly, right? Because it is a basket and it fluctuates. If yes, great. We can give you a, you know, 50 ish or more percent coupon after fees. Is that interesting to you? If yes, click here. Right. Uh, so those are the kind of things that we, we want to try and unpack for folks. Um, one size does not truly fit all. 
And we think that over time, a lot of our J assets, for those not familiar, J is kind of like our moniker that we throw on top of our receipt tokens. Uh, Some of them have extra value or things that they do. We think that those J assets over time could be quite Lindy uh, with regards to being base pair uh, assets across other portions of, of DeFi, just based on real yield. Because everything we're talking about today is, is real. There's no, you know, there's no, hey, we're going to give a million Jones out so that you can, you know, mint on this thing. That's just not really how we're, how we're operating. I'm sure you have follow-ups on that, but I'll, I'll shut up and listen for a bit. I tend to ramble. Nah, dude, you're good. That, that was no, yeah. I, I think I, I really just wanted to ask that because I, I think from a user perspective, most people kind of just see uh, these different projects and protocols coming out with you know like uh, shipping different products. Uh, you know, obviously over time, and I guess they don't really think about what like on the team side what they had to kind of go through in terms of a thought process. Oh yeah, on what's releasing? I, I could you know? tell you that this product we've been working on it since June. Initially, what we wanted to do was we wanted to work with a couple lending protocols. Uh, we didn't want to do the USDC side. So based on that, the product has evolved and changed over time. We actually feel like right now we have such a competitive advantage with this product. Um, just because we, we really do think that the yields that we're going to be able to offer are so sustainable and competitive and uh, just frankly amazing, especially where we are in this market, that it just feels like the right time to launch this. And we're, we're really excited about, about painting that picture for folks. Dope. Yeah. Well, with that, with that said, I think we can actually get into uh, some of the, uh, some of your newest products and also a little bit of the upcoming ones. Um, I definitely want to start off with, and I'm actually going to share a tweet here from y'all's page. Uh, let's start off with MetaVaults. I know you guys just launched that uh, was like, like, like roughly a month ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you give us some insight into what that is and how we can utilize it? Yeah, sure. So, Ice, you want to take on the MetaVaults piece? Ice kind of... Uh... Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So, with MetaVaults, we found that the Meta Vaults, uh, you know, for those of the, you that are unfamiliar, the Meta Vaults are a vault product for LPs, right? So LP tokens. For example, if a user is in a DPX and ETH LP earning like 28% APR from DOPEX emissions, um, users can then deposit their LP inside a Meta Vault. And what the Meta Vault does is that it takes a portion of the yield generated by the LP and uses it to buy options. And that, that's completely automatic. So what we found is that, you know, being a naked LP, meaning that you're just, you know, you're just passively LPing into Uniswap, collecting your yield, auto compounding, whatever. Being a naked LP, uh, someone would, you know, our back test indicated that that would have been worse than being in any meta vault. So meta vaults come in two flavors, right? So, you know, if I'm farming DPX ETH and I'm feeling kind of bullish, I can deposit in the bull meta vault, which will then buy call options automatically with the yield. And likewise, there's a bear meta vault that'll buy put options um, with the yield. And those are options on ETH. So I think the back test indicated something like, you know, on a relative basis, the RDPX and ETH Meta Vault outperform, would have outperformed the naked RDPX LP by over 17% over the past year, you know, which is a huge outperformance. Um, and obviously, those APRs and yields come with their own disclaimers. You know, it was back testing. Um, we obviously use several assumptions, such as like the price of options and things like that. So, you know, it, it's not set in stone, but what it does indicate overall is that um, any meta vault bull or bear is better than being a naked LP. So what we're actually trying to do right now is we are working with Dopex to potentially integrate the meta vaults into the farming UI. So it would be a very easy experience for users to, you know, deposit their liquidity on Dopex and then with just another button, uh, put that LP to good use um, and get, 
you know, even more yield in a metal level. Yeah. So little little bit of alpha, but uh, that uh, farming LP may end up working with uh, some some decks in the future. So you may just go to that decks when you create your LP, and uh, you know you might be able to just do it straight away from there. So some interesting partner integrations potentially I think on the horizon. Right with the uh, Schmorbital. So. Mm. Interesting. Um, to give you some background also uh, on this, uh, so so DPX ha- had a pretty crazy run a few months ago where it, it rocketed up to about like a, I think it was like a thousand, maybe a few dollars shy of that. But it was a thousand bucks. And I, I remember w- when that happened, uh, you know, we were curious because one of the products that we have is is a, a vault that we uh, manage um, where we're kind of trying to, you know, determine you know, price movement on RDPX and, and DPX through some you know channels and of that of, of technical analysis and other things that we use and system automation. Um, and we asked around. We asked like actually a lot of Dopex wells. We're like, hey, you know, what are your opinion on why the price went up so much and kind of what are you doing? And so one thing we were actually noticing, which I thought was pretty pretty funny, pretty cool, whatever. Um, most folks, the way that they actually uh, approach this was they just unLP'd, right? So when you think about it, if you unLP, you're creating this thin liquidity situation, right? And so when you have less liquidity, then price movements are more extreme. Um, that probably had a lot to do with this huge candle. But part of the problem, though, is that then when people go to sell, you get the opposite way, and so. This product is interesting because let's say you're bullish on Dopex, um, but you still want to have this, some of the rewards and liquidity long term. Um, you know, you could stay LP, but you can also cap- capture some of that upside. Uh, it's not as much as if you would on LP, obviously, uh, but it is pretty darn good, and we have the numbers to show it. And so I think that it's a very interesting proposition for for larger products that. Uh, or sorry, larger holders uh, or smaller holders, because again, this is automated and it kind of gives you that exposure with a little bit of that stability from being an LP and the underlying yield. But this is also something that this is kind of a proof of concept that we can then deploy across other products, right? So there's no reason that we couldn't take this type of product. And, you know, I'm just using examples here. So let's say that uh, like uh, uh, Camelot has a pair that also has options on, uh, you know, somewhere in Arbitrum, we could do a similar style LP product uh, if we feel like there's a product market fit. So now that we've kind of become black belts in the automation side of this product, and a lot of it is done through botting and kind of working with off-chain bots, uh, we really do feel like this is a product that we're going to see more of. Uh, and, you know, as long as we feel there's sustainability in the underlying yield of the LP, uh, expect to see more of these uh, in the future, uh, it's actually pretty, it's actually pretty awesome. And you know, this this, is, this comes from someone who myself, um, I feel like I'm like one of those dudes. And again, yeah, of course, not financial advice. Uh, last person you want to be taking any financial advice from. Uh, I'm like one of those dudes, who, dudes who like LPs. And yes, as soon as something like skyrockets, I'm like, should I just like withdraw it? <laughs> but it's like the whole point of being an LP is to capture the volatility, right? Um, yeah. But that's exactly. so, you want so the interesting. But when you think about an LP, right? Like if you're LP, depending on what you're paired against, it's kind of like a put, right? So if you're LP to get something with lower vol, it's like a put. So if you are in something like, you know, let's use something a little more volatile. So let's say that you're in like spell, right? So spell obviously has pretty high volatility, but let's say you're paired with that against like USDC, right? So obviously it's, it's you know, if, if, if spell skyrockets, you know, it's a little bit like a put. Uh, if spell falls, then you're going to, hey, it's a little more stable, but I believe in spell long term, so that's why I'm here, and then I'm going to farm that, right? So there's definitely reasons to be on both sides, and that's why we think that these vaults, the architecture of them is so cool, um, you know. And you could just flip, you know, you're not stuck in one. If you're in one, our epochs are a week because that's the, the duration of the option, but then once the duration is up, there's a, you can signal the change in advance. So you just signal, and then for the next epoch, flips. Very cool. 
it also allows you to see kind of sentiment, which is really neat. You know, you go look at the website and see, okay, are more people bullish, bearish? What's the sentiment out there? Do you think that they're right? Do you think they're wrong? Right. So there's a whole, whole new level of uh, visibility that we've given folks on the DOPEX side. Um, and, you know, we'd love to do this, obviously, with other assets as well. So we're really excited for it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's such a cool primitive. Um, yeah, it's dope. Uh, okay, cool. I, I think the uh, the next thing that you guys I assume you have coming up is the uh, J Aura asset. Can you maybe so, speak a little bit more to that? Yeah. So a little bit of a little bit of background there. So we are. Um, yes, we're launching J Aura. Uh, however, um, there's a little bit of governance that needs to happen. Um, with our friends over on balancer and things like that. So we're, we're in working through that. Uh, we, we kind of are, are pushing our JGLP product to the front of the line, uh, because we, we don't have the, the governance piece that we need to kind of work through. Uh, but we're super excited. I mean, we certainly talk about JGLP, uh, but just kind of like, you know, throwing it out there that we are going to be launching our GLP product first. Uh, and then secondly, will be our, are a product uh, just simply because we, we, we realize there's going to be some governance and back and forth and getting that right. Um, you know, we want to make sure it's right. We want to make sure the community really loves what we're showing. So hopefully that kind of also makes sense. Totally. Yeah. No, in that case, then maybe we just jump into a JGLP. If you guys want. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, I think we've put out a lot of very interesting articles and threads about what JGLP and JUSDC is. And I, I encourage, um, you know, people to kind of you know, go through them. But for those that aren't aware, JUSDC is a stablecoin vault that's coming out, um, which is going to be delta and gamma neutral. So it's going to be principle protected. And, you know, we are targeting APRs of, you know, between 6 to 8%, although we have many ways and many kind of secret gamification, uh, gamification methods to, you know, really pump that up and, you know, excited to reveal those when the time comes. And then the JGLP side is taking one of the best assets in all of DeFi, which is GLP, and then leveraging it up so that the beta matches the beta of the broader market. Um, and in doing so, it creates a product that's pretty much like having exposure to the broader crypto market, you know, thinking the price behavior of something like ETH or Bitcoin while earning two to three X the yield the GLP produces. Um, so, you know, that can be anywhere between uh, 40 to 60 percent, even more. So what we're pretty excited for that. So one is a risk off product. So. The JUSDC side, that is earning more kind of, you know, blue chip lending yields. And JGLP is a more risk on product where the exposure is more like having exposure, you know, the broader market. Um, I think the the real differentiator um, for these two products in, in the kind of innovation we've seen coming out being built on GMX and GLP is that we've taken a completely different approach to the architecture. So we're building it out more like a, you know, more like an automated um, lending pool where JGLP borrows USDC from JUSDC and pays a lending yield. So the process and the user experience is very similar to depositing in something like Aave. Um, and then so is the risk management because, you know, because it's set up like a lending pool, we don't have to deal with a lot of the risks of hedging models, um, no, no basis risk, you know, we're not short gamma or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, J JUSDC is set to earn a pretty hefty yield in that regard. Um, and I think the model is also can be likened to how Gearbox works, if anybody's familiar to that, where, you know, both sides, um, sorry, the lending side stays fully solvent at all times because the side that's borrowing from there has you know certain parameters that are automatically enforced um, for liquidation or rebalancing, so you know all the risk management is completely on chain, and I think that's what really sets it apart. Um, yeah, so that is JUSDC and JGLP coming out. 
you know, very early gen. I think to, to add on one piece to that would be that one of the things that people need to think about when they're looking at these products is what is the likelihood that they'll be able to sustain the yield profile of this product long term what's the survivability of something like this so for example you know think about our products we're taking glp's best qualities which is that it's a low beta asset meaning for those not super familiar with this stuff it's roughly 50 percent stable coins it's important to note that all of the values within glps they, they don't stay the same there's targets on them, but they move around, which is really important when you're thinking about us versus some of our competitors, because again, you can't just say, hey, GLP is 50% stable. No, it's not. It always moves. There's always a different percentage of ETH. There's always a different percentage of BTC. There's always different percentages of LINK and UNI. So it's important to understand that what you've got is a moving target. We're not trying to constrain that target. We're leaning into it and saying, great, I want to be risk on roughly about the same as ETH or BTC. If I'm comfortable with that risk profile, then I have the ability to multiply the yield. So if you believe that GLP yields long term are sustainable, and we can talk about what that means, then yeah, you want to be in this type of product. And then secondarily, the other thing to think about here is... Uh, to what degree is that level of sustainability? Well, what if yields on GLP compress? Okay. Well, if yields on GLP compress, then what's going to happen? Uh, well, you're still going to get from us to, to 3x, let's say, uh, that yield. And so you'll be better off from a yield perspective than holding uh, you know, your, your naked GLP if yield is what you're after. You'll also, let's say, I mean, if you think we're closer to the bottom of the market than the top of the market, like, like I do, I don't think we have another 50% to fall from here. Uh, I think we're probably closer to the bottom. Um, I, I don't want to hedge away all of my risk. I want to start taking risk. If that's what you think, then this is a good product for you. But if yields compress, like the other, you know, the other day, there was a 15% uh, ETH yield on GLP. It's important to point out that their yield is, some of it is, is in something called escrow GMX, which is not immediately liquid. As yields potentially compress, or even if they don't compress, um, it gets harder to then sustain other parts of some of these pools, but really not for us. Because again, we've, we've taken the best parts we think of GLP and we've maximized them. But if you don't want to take that side of the trade and you want to take the USDC side of the trade, fantastic, because we know that as long as the GLP product is putting out good, sustainable yields, we'll be able to take a, a reasonable approach to leverage such that we'll be able to make our USDC, JUSDC depositors uh, whole on a regular basis. And, you know, currently the product is going through audit. We're really excited to get that audit done. Um, we, we've had no issues yet at all, knock on wood. Uh, but we really do think that the sustainability is something you really need to think about. Because if just thinking about, again, we talked about game theory. If we're right about this product, let's say that people vote with their tokens that this is where they want uh, to have exposure. OK, well, what that means is that it's going to put more and more pressure on GLP yields at some point, potentially. Right. Which means that we have a very sustainable model compared to our peers. And so I think that, you know, it, it's really, really important to think through not the first week, not the first month, but really think, OK, six months down the line when we're probably in a different market, um, you know, where where can I see something sustainable? Uh, how do I get into this? And, and I think that we really have something special. Um, we've had a few conversations uh, just starting to work with folks that are committing early investor capital to this. Uh, so they've, they've, we've had some commitments. We won't name them yet uh, because we're still working on our commitments. If you are interested in being one of those folks, like you represent a DAO, uh, you know, please let us know in our Discord. But 
Um, you know, we've been having those conversations and I think it's really eye opening for a lot of folks once they kind of unpack it and see the numbers, because that's one thing we're not shy about. It's like, look, we'll show you the math. We'll show you the numbers. We have nothing to hide. Take a look at this and tell us what you think. And so, you know, I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of that. We'll be doing a ton more AMAs, releasing a lot more data. Um, I think probably closer to the end of the holidays because, uh, everybody frankly needs a break, (laughs) but uh, yeah, it's been a long year, but I think people are going to be really excited about this. We're really excited about this product. To piggyback off of that, I, I'd love to kind of um, get your thoughts as well. Um, maybe a little, on a little bit more side of like, so obviously we have different different communities, obviously, within the arbitrary ecosystem and, and even that within the GovX and, uh, you know, in this case, GMX ecosystem. <laughs> but I guess what, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to go, I guess is what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, this is obviously going to make a lot of people who are in the Jones DAO ecosystem very happy. Um, and as well, I'm sure, in the GMX ecosystem. Like, what, what would you say, I guess, are the key uh, positives and, I guess, benefits Be- for Be- GMX? Before, before we proceed, we have to dispel some FUD. So in our chat, oh, yeah. people are saying that you and I sound exactly the same. Guys, never when I started guys. this call, I didn't know who I was talking to. I was Bro. like, this is where is this notch? What's going on? Okay, well, I've never seen you guys in the same place at the same time. So, Okay, <laughs> Hunter, I got an idea. Okay, you say Arbitrum, and I'll say Jones, and we'll do it on three. All right, one, two, three. Jones. Jones. You guys said... Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so <laughs> No, no, rugs set up. Rugs. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, all right. Get the replay. Right. Yeah, shut it down. That's all right. Well, uh, <laughs> th- th- this is something that'll be solved the next day. Oh my god! I don't want to give I'll, anyone a resolution. <laughs> I'll put a I'll put a voice changer on, so I sound like uh, I sound like I'm doing one of those uh, uh, hidden camera videos or something. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right so, so to answer your, your question go ahead ice sorry oh people yeah wanna I was hear, gonna, people don't want to hear hunter again all of this is, is gonna be gmx and glp lps so you know there's been a lot of talk around the sustainability and scalability of gmx as a platform and um, some of the criticism around that has been that gmx runs what's called kind of like a b-book model where GLP, the liquidity, is kind of trading against users. On a centralized exchange, you have market makers doing the same thing, right? Where they're trading against users. Um, they're trying to provide the kind of the best spreads. But, you know, as a market maker, um, they're they're hedged, right? So they know the kind of risk they're taking on and they can do various things to mitigate that. Now, GLP is a passive LP um, providing liquidity for trades to happen on GMX, right? So GMX, GL, GLP depositors um, just like natively putting their funds into um, just vanilla GLP, they're not hedged, right? I mean, there is some kind of hedging that takes place inside of GLP where it, it does counter trade, uh, the majority of traders on the platform. But the main risk of GLP is what happens if everybody is net short and prices go down. That's where GLP actually loses money. Um, And, you know, when you have really profitable trades in that direction is where the criticism of the GLP model has been. So that's where I think it's really important for products uh, and protocols like Jones to come in and provide an additional layer built on top of GLP. So you can kind of transfer and, and, you know, um, transmute the risk in very innovative ways. So you split something like GLP, right, where you're taking on a bunch of different risks into, you know, into buckets where people can kind of seek out the exposure that they want, right? So the way we're doing that here is we have a bucket, which is risk off, JUSDC, earning, you know, a ton of stablecoin yield. And then we have a bucket that's super risk on getting you know, similar exposure to ETH or Bitcoin. And that is JGLP earning two to three X the yield that GLP generates. So by building this kind of, you know, like a pseudo market maker hedging layer on top of GLP, we're actually making the platform 
uh, very attractive and scalable. Because suddenly now you can have, you know, institutions come in and be GLP depositors and have their, you know, um, risk requirements or hedging mm -hmm. taken care of by a protocol like Jones. So I, I think the biggest beneficiary of all of this is GMX because it, it makes GMX scalable and it also ultimately attracts a lot of liquidity for traders to have, you know, less slippage, um, you know, bigger position sizes, things like that. So I, I think we're really going to take, uh, well, when the market takes off again, we're really going to see uh, perp dexes like GMX take off. And this is going to be crucial to the success of that. So we've been working very closely with the GMX team. And, you know, we're proud to call them partners. And we're, you know, pretty grateful that they kind of see eye level with us um, on things like this. And yeah, I think it's super important. So, I mean, anecdotally, like I tried to use ETH and BTC uh, 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 G uh, GMX um, directionality on the FTX kind of bad day. Um, and there were times when I could not get, uh, get in with the size I wanted. And, um, you know, I think a product like ours is just going to, to ISIS point, you know, whether you're a whale, whether you're an institution, whether you're an individual user, you know, more liquidity is, is going to open up the doors for more fees. And GLP is a product built on top of fees. And so I think that for them, uh, they've got other products coming out. Um, if you haven't taken a look at their product roadmap, it's pretty incredible. Um, but I think that this product is going to be very, very, very complimentary. Um, to that whole uh, process that they're going through. And we're really, really excited to continue to kind of have this really great partnership with them. Um, and we'll, de we'll definitely be doing an AMA with them closer to launch, but uh, really excited. And they've been incredible. Just shout out, like, I don't know, I, I, I'm not scrolling through here, but I, I don't know if there's anybody on this call who who's in GMX. But um, I mean, just to, to call out one person wouldn't be fair. The entire team has been so great with us. Um, we discovered things that, you know, maybe they didn't see and they told us stuff we had no idea. But I mean, we, we have lived GLP and and uh, for, for quite a long time. And also shout out to the Blueberry community because we love you guys and we'll make sure that there's something special for you as well. Whoops, Alpha. <laughs> <clears throat> Love the art. <laughs> well, people are here for a reason, right? I mean, of course. No, no, they're here. They're here to hear, hear us speak. That's why. Um, that's well. They're here to hear you speak, or me, same person. Yeah, us. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> us. The we, the royal we, the royal we. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, I'm really, really excited and looking forward to the to the, uh, to the GLP, J GLP and J USD, USDC products. Um, I think to, to shift uh, to shift the conversation a little bit. Um, for those who uh, are, you know, well ingrained into the Arbitrum ecosystem, you may know that there are two uh, very, very promising Dexans uh, coming. Uh, one being Camelot, uh, and one being Orbital. I uh, would love to get y'all's take on, I guess, these these Dexans and maybe your involvement uh, in them. Sure. Um, well, I don't know how much can be said about Orbital because I don't know what allowed to be said or not but obviously you know uh orbital is uh gonna be pretty a pretty exciting lindy dex i mean i think just in general like if we're just talking about generalities um arbitrum for a while has really needed a very lindy dex right i, I mean uh you've had sushi which is great but at the same time um you know there is you know and there's uni but but every our every ecosystem has one, right? I mean, if so, like if you're an Avalanche guy, like for me, when I was on Avalanche doing a lot of stuff, it was Trader Joe, right? Like Trader Joe was everywhere. I know they're coming here now. Um, but you know, you had Trader Joe, everything. I did everything through Trader Joe, and then I think there was Platypus after a while, right? Um, there's a Dex War going on right now on uh, on Metis, right? There's Dex Wars everywhere, but Arbitrum. For whatever reason, I don't, I don't know why, um, just didn't really have competition in the space. And competition is what drives eyeballs and ultimately capital. And so uh, Camelot, who we were approached pretty early on, 
Um, full disclosure, I was a Camelot guy in their first protocol on Phantom before, unfortunately, uh, you know, Luna had kind of <laughs> gone through their blow up and, uh, you know, Camelot kind of faded away uh, on Phantom. Uh, you know, but it's the same team. They built some incredible decks. And what none of it was their fault. It was beautiful. It was well run. It was audited, and the same team kind of got together and said, "Look, like we want to do this on Arbitrum." But they took a. It was pretty cool because they took a uh, uh, an approach that was kind of uh, look. We want to tailor what's needed to use. Tell us, like, what is it you're looking for in a Dex? And that's not usually the first conversation that happens when people come to you to kind of, you know. Uh, want to work with you so 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 that was that was a pretty cool conversation and then you know as far as orbital goes i think what's interesting there is a uh, totally different tokenomic system totally different uh group obviously dopex kind of being you know like i think when most people think of arbitrum they think of dopex and they think of gmx right because they're just they have huge communities right um and so you take probably what's like the most passionate community, the Dopex community. Um, and, you know, they get behind a DEX um, working with folks who, uh, you know, have done a lot of work in locking up a lot of these tokens like Plutus. I think it's going to be pretty powerful. So I think, I mean, I think it's going to be a great battle. Um, I know there's others out there. Uh, I know 369 launched. I know we've got Solidity coming. We've got Trader Joe, who I think I saw in the audience. Um, there's a couple more that are launching that I don't remember. I think was it, there's another one, fish, fish decks that just launched. Um, I mean, swap fish. They're in the crowd, actually. Fish swap. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yep. Fish swap. So like, it's great to see folks coming to Arbitrum, and we think what's really great for us is that allows us to then say, okay, who can give us the best terms so that we can offer the most to Jonesies who are interested in our protocol. So like. You know, we're we're certainly excited to partner and and kind of see what the different decks kind of build and have to offer. I'm looking forward to a lot of great great Twitter threads and a lot of uh, PvP. It'll be good to get the popcorn ready. I'm really excited for it. Be a little MMA. The memes are going to be godly. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Wait. It's going to be especially like I mean, like look, I, I'm just saying, you know. I, I've got skin in the game for obvious reasons, but like, you know, there are a lot of really good S posters out there uh, <laughs> that that are working for certain protocols, and I think uh, we're going to see some pretty pretty funny, pretty funny stuff out there. So I'm really excited. Totally agreed. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well, that being said, I think uh, I definitely want to give a chance to the audience. Uh, if they have any questions, um, please please feel free to raise your hand, uh, and I'll bring bring you up so you can ask the uh, the Jones out team a question. While we're waiting for hand up, um, just want to invite everybody. I think a lot of what we're talking about, you may hear things like Delta and Gamma and all these buzzwords, and part of the reason why Jones was created was to simplify this stuff. We have a really interesting discord where a lot of our folks that are on our strategy team answer a ton of questions out there. Uh, so please feel free. I think there's a lot of people here. L come and join us on the discord. Um, we don't bite. We have really good stickers and also really good uh, emojis. So for nothing else and for our metrics, if you join, you know, you get to use those on other servers, just saying. Um, but we'd also just really frankly like to have you. And then we also do our AMAs, and we also do our hats off, which is our market based uh, commentary. Uh, and we do that on a monthly basis. We, we should be having a, a hats off coming up uh, pretty soon. We just recently had one, which you can catch on Spotify uh, or any of your favorite providers. But we'd love to have you in our Discord. And if you have questions, let us know. We don't bite. The founders are in there. We talk. So uh, we're definitely happy to happy to chat. Also, really quickly, shout out to all the Jonesies that I see on the call. So thank you for giving us love and liking and retweeting. So thank you so much. By the way, additional shout out. I feel like every, every Discord I've been in that has any kind of hint of like a Dopex community in there, like the memes are just like, they're truly amazing. I, mean, I was actually in the Dopex Discord yesterday and I noticed that they have a channel called the Meme Kit. Literally yeah. just... Setting you up to make your own memes, it's insane. 
<clears throat> yeah, the CEO does a really good job. Uh, CEO of Diamond Pepe's. Uh, it's a it's a huge multilateral uh, or multinational. That huge organization. Up. They actually they actually own Dopex. I don't know if you know that. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> many many cadet companies under that. Yeah, we've uh, we may or may not have gotten access to some very spicy, um, you know. Uh, CEO private materials. He may have mm-hmm. given us access to his special vaults. Sure. We're gonna all, the stri- to me all the straight like GMX people are like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. But really, this is why we have products for everybody. I mean, it's, you know, it's not just fun and games, which is great, but, you know, it really is serious stuff. And, you know, we're happy to invite everybody. Um, yeah, just, just to button real quick, um, oh, yeah. you know, I've been told I should do this more often. So I, I, you know, I have to state that our products are not for everyone. You know, obviously there's stuff like smart contract risks, you know, you know, obviously risks relating to loss of funds that, you know, people should really understand. And also um, we prohibit the use of our UI and products in certain uh, restricted locations, which can be found in our terms and conditions on our website and things like that. So yeah, just be aware, people, um, that you're not accessing uh, any Jones style content from a location you're not meant to. So I'm so glad we got that out of the way. Yes, <laughs> me. <laughs> it's pretty important. <laughs> Very responsible of you guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, we just brought on, by the way, a staked queen. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to unmute staked. Uh, but feel free to ask uh, any questions. First of all, before you say anything, can we talk about cookies here? Just kidding. F you. That's that's fantastic. I like your banner. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. And um, thank you for having me up here. Cheers. Welcome. I've been enjoying learning more about the upcoming products. Really exciting. Uh, hope I'm not getting ahead of myself uh, by asking you if you'd like to tell us more about uh the Delta Gamma hedging strategies because that's very uh, way over most people's heads. And uh, how do you do that? How do you do that dynamically? How does it work? Anything you'd like to share about that would be great. Yep, yep, for sure. Uh, I can get into that. So um, our architecture for the JUSDC and JGLP makes it so that we eliminate you know, any delta or gamma exposure, we actually don't even have the need for hedges um, because, you know, JUSDC acts like a lending pool. Um, and then JGLP borrows USDC from that lending pool in order to, you know, buy more GLP and leverage the GLP inside of that vault. So the arrangement between the two vaults is that of, you know, basically a lending pool where the USDC is not exposed to you know, any price fluctuations inside of uh, GLP. um, And it's purely just earning a lending yield from lending to JGLP. Um, This is kind of similar to how Gearbox protocol works. Um, If if someone goes and deposits USDC to lend to Gearbox. um, And so, you know, the USDC side stays completely solvent because uh, the collateralization is insured by, you know, several mechanisms, automated rebalancing, liquidation, things like that. So for the user, it's a very similar experience, um, both, you know, like like UI and risk-wise, as, for example, being a depositor in a lending protocol on the USDC side. Um, and, you know, with existing models, um, you know, that are currently on the market today, which take a hedging approach to GLP. So it's very difficult to take something like GLP, which is 50% stables and 50% Bitcoin, ETH, altcoins, uh, to take that and to purchase hedges in order to make that completely delta neutral because that means that you are then short gamma. What that means is that you have a lot of basis risk meaning that your hedges won't necessarily match the exposure that you have. Um, Because, you know, in GLP, the composition of the assets fluctuates pretty much randomly because it fluctuates because of the market. And it also fluctuates because um, of, you know, trader activity. So 
to hedge that is very, very expensive. And as per our, you know, in-depth research and modeling, that's not a path you wanted to go down because ultimately we think it's it's kind of risky and, you know, like at, at least it's not producing the most efficient yield possible. So, you know, we've completely scrapped all of that very early in our process. And we went a completely different route, which is to have this kind of lending pool arrangement, which allows for higher and safer yield. So, yeah. I think an, another another thing to add on to that is that, <clears throat> you know, when you're thinking about the two products, the best way to think about them is that on the GLP side, we have bots that are actively managing the amount of leverage we're using, right? There's other things that we don't want to talk about because they're kind of trade secret for us, but there's other things that will be happening, right? However, that's the GLP side. You think about gamma, right? USDC side should feel and be gamma neutral and delta neutral if it's done the way that it's supposed to be done. Um, that's what we've created. The GLP vault is the price, uh, uh, you know, is price dependent on the USDC side. So I guess what I'm saying here is that USDC is never subordinate. Right? Your principle is, is going to be uh, maintained on that side because the GLP side is the one taking the risk. They're not too risk on uh, or and not too risk off faults. Right? They're completely distinct. And that's how we're able to offer that, that kind of differentiation in the product. Um, to also piggyback on, on ISIS point about just kind of working with other folks to get yield, you know, uh, or sorry to hedge, you know, like let's say you use Aave, right? Aave is cheap right now. Okay. What happens in a bull market when Aave is 10%, 20%, like it was six months ago. So those are the kind of things that we have to think about when we're building something, um, like who do we depend on? And so the easiest person for us to depend on in these types of cases where we're dealing with levers that we control is us. Uh, and so I think that's what we've done with this product. And, you know, I look forward to when that, you know, showing you guys that white paper and I think you'll be really excited. Thank you. That was very informative. And, Join the uh, discord. If any of that didn't make sense, please. <laughs> we could take it. <laughs> uh, I, I might have to take you up on that uh, for a couple of points, but uh, is the product right now at the stage where it's, uh, an automated, it's automated, it's an algorithm yes. that you've been yep. stress Fully testing automated. against several scenarios. Fully automated. Yep. And, and, um, have you, um, considered, uh, the possibility that it might require manual intervention on black swan events, or do you consider these uh, we, by definition, too rare to um, no. So uh, we we we've we've spent the better part of this year actually testing and modeling every scenario possible. You know, GLP has only been around for a little bit more than a year, but we actually went and simulated theoretically five years of historical GLP data if GLP existed five years ago, and we modeled out every single tail event that took place um, since, like you know, like. 2017 um and you know the 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 parameters relating to collateralization and leverage they they're managed automatically right so um everything that we've done is built upon a very solid bedrock of just in-depth understanding and research so yeah we, we've tested you know every scenario that's happened and even scenarios that haven't happened so all right. So I'm assuming you already run scenarios and deep pegging events and whatnot as well. Yeah, I mean, there's certain things like, um, for example, smart contract hacks, or you know, God forbid, one day USDC becomes insolvent. Uh, you know, stuff like that we can't control. But anything related to market forces, you know, changes in prices of assets, no matter how extreme they might be. Um, you know, that's all accounted for. And, you know, if anything, when, when those kinds of events happen, right, um, when when stuff like FTX happens, when, you know, all the market crashes that we've seen this year happen, volumes on exchanges like GMX go way up. And in those cases, the yield produced that goes to GLP also goes way up. So if anything, extra volatility should make the yeah. yield profile of these products even better.
This is something in general to think about too, which is the moment that you want liquidity in anything, the, the most you've ever wanted liquidity in your life, that's when liquidity disappears, right? Um, so these are the type of things that we've modeled. I'll put it to you this way. Um, we have baked into our products. If there is an, I mean, I'm not saying, Hunter, this is going to happen, but if Arbitrum shut down, we baked into our leverage uh, modeling a certain amount of time that if we didn't touch anything, uh, that we would still be within our de-risking uh, scenario. So I just, this is the level of thought and work that we've put into the product. I can't tell you, I mean, how many homes have been heated through Monte Carlo simulations uh, <laughs> and energy pills. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but this is the type of work that we're doing with this product because we do think that this is a scalable product. You know, there, there's there, GLP in a bear market, you know, the other day had 440 million in deposits in it. And think about what that does with price appreciation of the underlying assets in a bull market. So this is a product that we're building to be scalable to whatever size is required. Um, and these are the type of things that we've been thinking about for the last six months. So, All right. Now I know for a fact you and Hunter are not the same person. <laughs> okay. Good to know. How dare you? <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, thank you very much for uh, the very in-depth answers. That was really informative, and I look forward to learning more. Uh, what I can say right now is uh, Arbitrum is uh, lucky to have such a hardworking team uh, who's thought about their product a lot by the sound of it, and uh, it's been a pleasure again having the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the great questions. Thank you. Yep. We are definitely lucky to have you guys even despite that last uh, comment. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, all right, uh, so just to kind of uh, end off here, since I know we're actually past time, um, for those who do want to, um, you know, join the Jones Dow community or be a contributor in any way, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Right, well, the best way is um, you can go ahead and follow our Twitter. Obviously, I'm the speaking hat over here. You can just click on me um, and travel over to our page. Uh, we post a lot of updates there. Um, also like Notch had said before, please join our discord. The link is in our bio. Uh, we also have a newsletter that we write. It's all, it's called hats off. It is it's just the same name as the Spotify podcast that we release. And they're both, um, similar products giving, uh, macroeconomic evaluations and Jones protocol updates. So you can follow those along. Um, we also have a ghost where we, post some articles and I believe that you can you can find that by joining the discord um, we've got all those articles linked and those are the best ways to stay in touch and learn about the protocol yeah great just add on to that man you know shreddy notch hunter you guys you guys sound like very very similar man I yeah I think not Shred enough. us I think we all I think we should start a podcast and it's just called like three dudes one voice. Oh I God. think the more time I spend with you guys <laughs> I am going to end up sounding like we're we're just going to be like one organism. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> we're all the same person, bro. That's like, yeah. there there is there is no joke, there's no hype. We're just the same person with three. Yeah, we're That's sitting it. here with like four different voice changers on, like slightly different changes. So that's what this is. Thanks for coming, everybody. Appreciate all the attention and love for Jones Dow and the work we're doing. And Hunter, this has been incredibly lovely. Um, we really appreciate a platform like this and your expertise in moderating such an insightful discussion. Dude, all I know is how to speak. That's it. No, I I, I'm just winging everything. Uh, I just love listening to myself talk. That too. Like, that's actually what it is. <laughs> <laughs> not truly i mean i mean like these spaces are only possible and they're only this popular because of you guys so uh truly just excited to have you guys on here uh and really looking forward to everything you guys are building you guys have a good one all right cheers thanks everybody happy holidays <laughs>